In order to reduce these safety risks and potential health risks associated with poorly maintained, contaminated, or damaged protective clothing, NFPA 1851 requires your department to perform an advanced inspection at a minimum of every 12 months or whenever a routine inspection indicates a potential problem. This video is designed to train you to perform an advanced inspection of structural and proximity firefighting garments and helmets. The purpose of an advanced inspection is to have trained personnel evaluate whether or not a protective ensemble and its individual elements are fit for duty in its current condition. An advanced inspection and any testing when necessary must be performed or managed by trained departmental personnel or an independent service provider, also known as an ISP. During an advanced inspection, the inspector must determine if the gear is fit for duty and can be returned to service, additional inspection or testing is required by the manufacturer or verified ISP, the item is in need of repair before it can be returned to service, the item needs to be retired. All findings from an advanced inspection must be documented on an inspection form and kept on file with the department. Please refer to your department's standard operating procedures and NFPA 1851 for questions regarding repair, retirement, or disposal. To perform an advanced inspection on structural turnout gear, you will need the following. Clean turnout gear, dirt and soiling can hide damage. A clean, well-lighted work area. An inspection form. A length of new reflective trim identical to the trim on the gear being inspected. A focused beam flashlight a suitable light source, such as a fluorescent trouble light, a bucket, a measuring cup, isopropyl alcohol, begin your inspection by laying the garment out flat on a clean work surface. Document the garment's identification information on the inspection form. All separable layers of turnout coats and pants, including the drag rescue device, need to be inspected individually. Verify that the liner system is compatible with the outer shell. The model number and size are printed on the labels attached to each component. If they differ, contact the manufacturer or verified ISP before returning the garment to service. Now, test the attachments that hold the liner in place. Make sure all zippers, Velcro, and snaps work properly by opening and closing them. Check to see if there is any corrosion or wear that could inhibit the attachment's ability to hold your liner system in place during firefighting activities. Examine the stitching that attaches Velcro and zippers to the garment. Make sure there are no broken or missing stitches or any fraying. Any faulty or weak attachment should be noted on your inspection form and designated for repair before returning the garment to service. Remove the liner system and drag rescue device from the coat and the liner system from the pants. Set them aside while you inspect the outer shell. Closely examine the entire length of each seam. Look for missing or broken stitches. If you see either, note it on the inspection form. Include the specific location of the missing or broken stitch. Check each seam's integrity. Do this by pulling on the seams in a way comparable to the stress you might put on a seam when wearing the garment. Grasp material on both sides of the seam and pull in opposite directions. Work your way down the seam, testing the entire length. If you observe any looseness, note its location on the inspection form. Closely inspect all the fabric on the outer shell. Look for physical damage such as rips, tears, cuts, and abrasions. Damaged or missing hardware. Thermal damage, charring, burn holes, embrittlement, melting, or discoloration. Discoloration, significant changes in material texture, and loss of material strength can be signs of UV, heat, or chemical degradation. If you discover or suspect one of these, document it on the inspection form, then test the outer shell's strength. Grasp the part of the fabric you believe may be damaged with both hands. Now try to push your thumbs through the fabric. If you can, the garment should not be returned to service until it is properly repaired. One of the biggest threats to turnout gear is exposure to light, whether it is generated by the sun or fluorescent fixtures. Prolonged exposure to light can severely reduce the strength of fabric and seams in turnout gear and greatly impair its ability to provide protection. Discolored fabric is one symptom of overexposure to light. If you observe discoloration in either the outer shell or on the face cloth of your thermal liner, test its strength. 
Inspect your coat and pan shells for missing, burned, loose, melted or torn retro-reflective trim. Loose trim or trim with missing stitches should be documented on your inspection form for repair. If the trim maintains its retro-reflectivity, it can be re-sewn to the garment. To assess the retro-reflectivity of trim, do a side-by-side -side comparison with an identical sample of new trim. Stand at least 40 feet from the trim in question. Hold a bright, focused beam flashlight at eye level, either next to the temple or on the bridge of the nose. Aim the light beam at the garment's trim. Replace the trim if the reflected light from the garment is substantially less than that seen on the new sample. All closure systems on your coat and pants need to be inspected to make sure each is intact and operates properly. Make sure all zippers, hooks, and D-rings, snaps, or Velcro closures work by engaging and disengaging them. Examine the stitching that attaches Velcro and zippers to the garment. Make sure there are no broken or missing stitches or any fraying. On zippers, hooks, and D-rings, and snaps, check for corrosion. Examine Velcro for worn, abraded, or melted pieces. Any hardware that is corroded or any Velcro that is damaged should be marked on your inspection form and designated for repair. Make sure all hardware works and is firmly attached. Look for corrosion or wear on any hardware and suspender attachments. Also look for wear on the fabric surrounding them. If hardware is loose, doesn't function properly, is corroded or worn, or the surrounding fabric is worn, document it on your inspection form and replace the attachment or have the fabric repaired. Find the safety labels, cleaning instructions, and manufacturer's identification labels. They should be legible and securely affixed. Look for separation around the outer edge of the label and curling in the corners. If any are illegible, missing, or loose, note it on the inspection form and contact the manufacturer for instructions.